All right, so uh, uh, hello everybody. We thought that a, an interesting activity for those people out there that are bored at home and looking for some fun hands-on uh, things would be um, something that I've done many times as a hobby myself and also has done with many students, which is to find some um, unused electronics that you might have around the house and then just try to understand what's inside this. How does it work? What are all the parts inside of it? So now I recommend for um, uh, any students that are uh, below 18 that they have a, a parent or guardian that could supervise. Uh, this would involve uh, you know, mainly just simple hand tools you might have around the house. And I guess then um, uh, a local student, Sarah here, actually has some non-working object to take apart, right? Yeah, so I've got this relatively simple calculator here. It, it no longer works. Um, I've had it for a long time. And you can see, I've actually already taken the screw off, but there was a screw here, ah, here, um, right. that opens the back of it, and you, and I'll, hopefully I'll be able to see inside um, and see what kinds of parts make this thing go. So I'm going to just kind of put... And the main idea in these things is to just try to demystify that all of these things that work around us just have a bunch of things working together inside that it is possible in taking them apart to try to understand and identify um, the, the parts that are uh, making all these things function. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to try and I've already got it like sort of halfway off, but okay. the, the top is a little bit trickier to get off. So. Sometimes it'll be little plastic snaps or otherwise. Sometimes there'll be screws. It's kind of hard to know until you get into something what's holding it together. There we go. That's it out. Oh. All right. Whoa. <laughs> okay, so that part that just flopped down then is a liquid crystal display. So that's, um, you know, got a, a little liquid layer inside of it and then electrodes on the back. And when electrical signals are sent to the back, different part of it, parts of it will be darkened or otherwise to allow you to see the digits. Oh. Well, now it's working. That's funny. Did you just fix your calculator? I think so. <laughs> by, by taking it apart? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I did. <laughs> Interesting. So now that that display is attached to something below it. So what what's below it? Um, looks like this. Okay, so that's a circuit board. Yeah, it's just a circuit board. It doesn't seem to have any other, like parts on it besides well the other parts will be on the top of the circuit board yeah and there's got to be switches and there has to be some chip in there that's actually doing the math and then I, it looked like there was a battery on there right yeah so there's a battery right here and I have yep. a feeling do you think this could be the chip this it's like covered with the uh, yeah, that's it. Does, are, are, are a lot of the traces going into that? Yes, yeah, they're little... all basically going into that. Right, so that's the brain zone. That little, and so they've just covered it over with probably some soft rubber or hard epoxy. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes uh, the manufacturers will do that so you can't see what the chip is. Interesting. Sometimes when you open them up, the chips will be, they're usually rectangular or square, and they'll have labels on them, and then you know essentially everything you would need to know about how to make your own calculator, because you know what part they used as the brains of that. Sometimes when people make consumer electronics, they will cover them with something to make it harder to reverse engineer what it is. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So now, did you want to just put it back together so it's useful, or did you want to take it apart further? I can take it apart further. I have a, this is one of the most simple calculators I have. I really don't. So, really don't so can you get the circuit board out of it? Uh, yeah, I can try. I'll, should I like disconnect, um, the screen from it? Um, uh, there's, you, you could, but there's, it's probably not necessary in order to get the uh, rest of the circuit board out. Okay. Are there screws holding the circuit board in or is it just? No, it's like snaps. Yeah, just plastic catches. That's the simplest way to put it together. So it should just snap out, possibly. It's a little bit ad adhesive, actually, I think. Oh. Yeah, you might need to get a tip of a screwdriver under an edge and kind of gently work it out if it'll come without killing it. I think that's what I'm going to try and do. 
And of course, the beauty of, of working with a part that's completely dead is that you don't have to worry about damaging it because it can't possibly matter if you damage it or not. That's true. And um, even though this one is not dead anymore. Oh, that was a crack. Well, now it's dead. Yeah, now it's dead. <laughs> uh, I don't really have any emotional... Uh. Did, it, did it come apart? Not really. It's it just kind of cracked part of the circuit board. <laughs> that was not a good sound. <laughs> yeah, it's... So it sounds like it's pretty thoroughly glued into place. Yeah, it, it looks like glue. It's also... So Sarah, what happens if you push on the, the buttons on the far side to try to push it, push them through? Push the buttons. Oh, that's a, that's a good idea. Mm. No dice. It just stabs you through the rubber of the... Oh, okay. Yeah, let's see. That may be as about as far as we can get with that one. Maybe. I have another one. Another equally useless one. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but like underneath the uh -huh. circuit board, there's this rubber piece. I think this is actually what the buttons are. Um, okay. But it's it's like very, very much adhered to. Can, can you show me the back of it again? Just flat. Back? Oh. Yeah. Uh, but aren't there screws? Or what are those? What are those? These things. Those blue things? plastic things. Are they screws or are they just plastic? No, they're just plastic. Oh, so those are the things that are kind of have been popped through and are holding it in place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm not sure how to. Um... Wait, is it? It's also not broken. That's so weird. I thought still, still working. I thought that crack was a death sentence, but it's it's not. Well, did you want to go ahead and put that one back together later, and we could try another one if you if you have another dead calculator. Yeah, I do. I do have one more. Let's just put this aside. Where's one of them? There it is. Yeah, and okay. And what we could do later also is I have a, a dead and abandoned Verizon wireless router that we can take apart. So I'll, I'll record that later. Great. All right. So this one um, has two screws on the back here. And here. It's reverse here okay. and here. And there may be two screws at the other four corners underneath those dots. Underneath the dots? Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. I'll check that out. Let's see. Mm, it's just plastic under the dots. Okay. Alright, unscrewing. This one looks like it's going to be a little bit easier to take apart. Oh, maybe not. Ow. It's because on the other side it's like shut because there's no screws on this side, on this bottom. Is there a battery compartment? Oh, is this? It could be. No, there's not. That's There should be though. Because you should be able to change the batteries. Usually. Mm, doesn't look like it on this one. Okay, but the, two, but the two screws came out. Will the top of that case come apart a little bit if you just try to... Yeah. But just that much. Mm-hmm. Unless I... I mean, I could just wedge my screw in there. Screw, screwdriver in there. Yeah, some, sometimes there are hidden screws on, on one side or the other that are covered by hatches or stickers or... Right. Nice. <laughs> it was the, um, I popped it open with my screwdriver. This fell. So this is the back. Oh, okay. Oh, popped open. There it is. So kind of similar in a way. Yeah, it is kind of similar. It's got the same, um, this is the, the screen here. Held on yep. almost the same way. There's some electrical tape on this side. Yep. Um, 
There's also, this one looks like slightly more complex. I think, oh, because at the top of here, it's actually a solar powered one. So it's got this, sure. it's got this solar panel. And then on the back, you can see where the solar, where the, the electrical where, connections for that. Yeah, it connects. Um, and it looks like there's a chip, there's a battery, and it looks like there's a red LED on there too. There is, yeah. Um, that LED is connected to one of the wires for the solar panel. So I think that has something to do with it. Uh, I see the battery. Maybe I can get this circuit board out. Although it looks like, it, see it's got these little white circles. They, those look like the same as the blue circles. Right. So I'm not entirely sure if I'll be able to. Well, and the only thing on the other side of that board are going to be the push button switches, likely. Right. Yeah. Just for the for the buttons on the actual calculator. But but were there other things on that back side of that board? I thought I saw. Yes. Okay. So there's also this ah this thing right here. So it's got a two component. Is it uh. Yeah, I can't tell. It could be a diode or a resistor. It's probably something to do with the power. Yeah. Does, yeah. That, does it have a symbol underneath it? Yes, it does. And next to it, it says D1. Is this the symbol? Yes. Okay, so that's a diode for sure. Yeah, so this is the symbol for diode. So it, it lets electricity flow in one direction, but not the other. Cool. So it's probably some protection device for the power supply. Yeah. And maybe for charging... Because it looks like maybe there's a rechargeable battery in there. Yes. Yeah. So this is this is the battery, I assume. Um, and it must be rechargeable because... Otherwise the solar cell wouldn't make any sense. Exactly. It seems to just kind of go down like that. Right. right. Um, and that is it. that says mm, another diode. It has the diode symbol next to it. So, and you can see, you know, that circuit board has all sorts of traces on it that carry electricity around the board, but it's also quite common on those printed circuit boards that they will have written a few things, like maybe the name of the company. It looked like there was a version number for that board. Um, yeah, I think it's down, I think you're referring to down here. Right. Like. Yeah, so they would have different uh, symbols and indicators that are just printed onto the board really yeah. for the technical side when they're assembling it or repairing it or fixing it. Next to that diode that you pointed out, it says D1, which I assume means diode 1. Right. Yep. And then next to the LED, it says D2, it's for, because LEDs are also diodes. Yes, they are. And so, and sometimes you'll see components that'll be resistors, they may have an R in a number, or capacitors, they may have a C in a number, and those are quite common components that you find on circuit boards as well. Yeah, two uh, these must be the capacitors C2 and C3. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so they're going to be for filtering the power. And then the, the chip also has a label. It looked like it was U1. U1, yep. It was U1. Yeah, so a lot of times the integrated circuits, the more complicated parts, are, you know, are just a whole bunch of things put together. Could be diodes, transistors, resistors all together. They would just have a unit number, so unit 1. Oh, yeah. So in a more complicated circuit, you could have dozens of resistors and dozens of integrated circuits, which are u units and different diodes and different LEDs. And right. So what um, what does like P1 and P2 and stuff like that? What does that What does that stand for? Uh. Oh, are those are those just little? Are those where the the push button switches are? Mm mm. No, the push. Uh, oh, the push button switches. From the other side. They might be. They don't seem to be in this like straight line order though. Huh. They're just kind of plopped. And they're little pads, just little flat pads. Yeah, little little silver circles. It's kind of out of focus right now, but. I see what you mean. Yeah, and there's also K K number. Uh, yes. Well, I do not know for the rest of those. Interesting. All right, so um, so so I guess uh, you know in, in doing this activity, then in the end you'll have taken apart stuff, and actually, um, if you have purely plastic parts, in many cases those can be recycled. Yeah. Uh, electronic parts they generally don't want put directly into waste, but it depends where you are and what county. I guess in our county they actually take electronic waste that they gather occasionally. Um, 
it, although in some cases it's possible in kind of a more advanced uh, set of this activity to actually reuse parts of it. Like the LED in that yeah. principle can be unsoldered and then built into LED projects or electronic projects or otherwise. Yeah, I do. I do have um, a soldering a soldering gun. And, and the um, I guess that um, the the photo cell for charging probably could also be used separately for some other projects. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, all right, very good. I think we're, that's probably it for now. And as always, when doing this sort of thing, I recommend washing hands afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> all right.